Okay, so it was January of 1991. Um, I got a call to do a movie part for Hogan. What was it called? I don't know. Something, uh, something, something macho. But anyways, they needed bad guys. And me and Undertaker, and I knew him from Dallas in 86 anyways, but we both thought that there's Mark. And they do the bad guy. We read the lines. Well, I go out there. I didn't practice my lines. I didn't do nothing. I was just dumber than a box of rocks, you know. So, and Mark did. And uh, I'm sitting there back at the hotel with a cocktail after we both, you know, did our stuff to try to get the part. And it wasn't even close. Mark got it. And how, you you know, I mean, Mark's a sick looking guy. I mean, red hair. You know, you know, he looks like the kid on Christmas Story that put his tongue on the thing. You know, mm-hmm. Scott Scott Farkas. You know, <laughs> he's the red haired crazy kid. And anyway, so he got the part, but it was the WWF that um, they called, and I wasn't even working for him, but they knew they were going to hire me because they heard about me, and they just needed a guy to. You know, they needed a guy. So, anyways, me and him both went out to WWF in February of 91, went to the costume area of who who uh, helps you out for a costume. And a gal, a couple of gals, made me the Viking, okay? And then they made Mark the Undertaker. Well... The Viking was trademarked, so I was only able to use that three times. And I liked the Viking. I did not like the name the Berserker, but Vince uh, backed off because it was uh, trademarked by a guy in Japan, believe it or not, and uh, was getting fitted for all this black wear, you know, and I'm like, shit, that ain't going to go, you know. I couldn't have, I couldn't have been any more wrong, you know. But what was funny is we both went to Japan and because Japan's so different, he wore he would go down the aisle real slow and you know, Paul Bear and oh, and while well, Japan just farted at it. They didn't want it. they they went they thought it was the stupidest thing they've ever seen. Well, Vince and them guys took Mark in in a room and said, who can you have a good match with? And Mark said, Nord, you know, because I'll hit, I'll bounce off him, I'll go flying, I'll do, you know, and make it semi-exciting, you know. But Mark liked me, too. So that's how I got a good run-in with him. I got about six months in with him. And, uh, actually it wasn't right away in 91, uh, but I got a good run in with him where I was making 10 grand a week, uh, because he was on, we were main event. And, uh, I don't know what months it was. I can't remember that well, but I know it wasn't right away, but we did get hired the exact same day in 91, uh, February 91. And uh, because of his consistency, his gimmick, he ended up making millions. Um, I was I was always a guy that kind of wanted to get home to his kids, and for whatever reason, I just I feel like in my heart I wasn't that good of a you know wrestler. I thought that I could entertain once in a while. I knew this, I could have a good match with Mark. We had a great match, you know, uh, that I felt that it was. And, and, uh, but anyways, that's when we became close because he did me a heck of a favor by saying John Nord is who I want. Cause they were going to push him beyond belief. And they did. And he said, I want Nord. And, uh, uh, I got a good run in, you know, and 
I don't know. I've been friends with him since. Uh, I haven't seen him much, but occasional call and guy yeah, do you know? But you know, he just he'd do anything for me. And it really makes me feel good. You know, it ain't so much. It just makes me feel good that uh, a guy his how successful he is that he didn't forget about me.